All right. Um, Chris, you're writing down the time, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. <laughs> we're in executive session. We're going to skip down to the consent agenda um, because we're going to go a little out of order. Um, the consent agenda approves items that have been discussed in um, subcommittees. So is there anything to extract from the consent agenda? Those that we approve the consent agenda I second. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Okay. You just have to write your name, Ms. Chris. All right. Um, all right. So we're going to wait now. Yeah, I think I'm going to dot in here. All right. Let's see. I skipped the opening. I hope no one minds. I think you've seen I, the problem. I kind of love the music, though. It's like a little bit like walking into Disney, but okay. All right. Sing along. All right, so <laughs> we're really going back to salute to the flag is where we're at. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is the opening of the news here. So um, cameras, if we could just shut off for a second. Any comment? Marsha's not here. Anything, Mr. Woods, right? Marsha's not here. No? Okay. All right. So I think, Dr. Stella, you're up. Oh, wait, no, no PTO nope. report, right? Where you almost snuck out. <laughs> uh, oh, no, board member recognition. I can't help saying, though, the TV audience didn't see the uh, news broadcast, but every week there's a group of Beecher Road School students that put together, produce, and implement uh, a broadcast for the entire school. And it's a wonderful way to start the meeting. So thank you, Mr. Crawford, and please extend our thanks to uh, our producers and our anchors. I'm going to get up for this one here. That's good. Well, this is a very special month because this March is Board of Education Appreciation. Appreciation Month. And our first selectman has taken time from her busy schedule. I know she wasn't feeling so well, so I give her, it shows a, it's an indication of uh, the, uh, how the esteem that she holds you in to be here to present a special citation. Salvatore? I do want to say how much we all appreciate this Board of Education. It's really, it's easy to appreciate you and to commend you for the work you've been doing. And I know it's going to be a very busy year or two with the, um, with the building changes and all. And everybody's done such a great job and pulled together. So really, it's a, a pleasure to be here. And, and you know, you all do so much to make Teacher Road School what it is. And it's such a shining example for our town. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Very high tech. Here it is. <laughs> we have oh, oh, I'm like the kids. Thank you. Uh, this is this is the proclamation from the town. Whereas an excellent public school system is vital to the quality of life in this community and fundamental to preserving a strong democratic society now and in the future. And whereas public schools are being held to higher standards of accountability than ever before at both the state and federal levels. And whereas the Woodbridge Board of Education represents an invaluable resource in this community as local decision makers responding to the challenge of a sh Sorry, responding to the challenge of assuring our school meets these higher standards and whereas these school board members must formulate policies to assure that all children learn to their fullest potential and these board members continually <coughs> strive for improvement and progress with an understanding of the need for commitment to the highest standards of student achievement and whereas these school board members are working diligently to assure our young people are educated and prepared for the future and whereas the men and women elected to these positions deserve recognition and thanks for their countless hours of volunteer unpaid service to public education and the children of our community. Now therefore, at the Woodbridge, the Woodbridge Board of Selectmen and the Woodbridge School District, thank all members of the Woodbridge Board of Education for their tireless and devoted service to our children 
our schools, and our community, and urge all residents of our community to join us in expressing appreciation to these exemplary public servants and hereby designate March 17, 2014 as School Board Member Day. So thank you all so much for all thank you. Thank you. If I could speak from here, well, it looks like St. Patrick has some competition today with, uh, <laughs> with this here. This gives us a wonderful opportunity to really extend our thanks to you. So on behalf of the uh, Woodbridge School District, School, Beecher Road School community, we want to thank you sincerely. Each one of you is a leader. You have hundreds of people as part of your network that voted for you, that put their trust in you as far as being guardians of our educational system. Each one of you brings unique talents, and uh, you're all highly educated. You all care about children, your own, and the children of our community. You all put in countless hours, and some, sometimes it's a thankless job, but you always see what the target is, and that's helping our children. Uh, on a personal note, I want to, want to tell you how much I enjoy working for you and, and with you for, for a wonderful goal with a moral purpose, and that's serving our children. Uh, in a challenging world, helping them to prepare for another world that they'll be living in. So as a token of our appreciation, we'd like to present you with a, with a book. This, this year's title is The Second Machine Age, and it will give us, the book will give us a lot to think about as far as looking down the pike and trying to figure out what kind of world are our, our children uh, going into. And if I could make this a little bit of a ceremony, invite you to come up. I'd like you to present each one of, each one of you with, with the book. Emily. Gary <laughs> 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 <Harry> Matthews. <laughs> Aaron Buckhavis. He's not here. He had, he's coming back. He's had to be Margaret Hamilton. <laughs> Christine Jackie. Matt Gilbert. And Carl has been on our board for a number of years. <laughs> and Lisa Connors is this time. Okay, so enjoy the book. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. As you can see, I, I, I like uh, uh, tradition and celebration. So. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. PTO update. I saw Bree. PTO week. Uh, we had two guest speakers over the last 10 days, two features sponsored by the PTO. The second grade had author Susie Klein come in, who's the author of the Horrible Carry series. Um, she's been here for many years coming to visit us. And her concept behind her presentation was um, teaching the children how her stories come from her life experiences and what she sees in her everyday life and trying to get the children to understand that so they can take it and create their own stories based on their experiences around them. And then today we had uh, David Schwartz come in who spoke to third, fourth, and fifth graders throughout the day. And he is new to our speaker program at Beecher. He came in to speak about um, wondering about things and how your imagination and wondering about different concepts in the world will affect the way that you are. And he was specifically um, has an inquiry based approach to math, science, and nonfiction literature. So that's who came in today. I have not gotten any feedback. We're going to be trying to talk to the teachers throughout the week to find out how they thought he was since he was new to the program. On last Friday night, we had Bingo Night, which is the last of our social series. Dr. Stella was there to call out some numbers, and he even gambled a little. Uh, <laughs> I didn't win, though. <laughs> um, but it was well attended. We had about 35 students there. Uh, they got into it as they always do. Pizza and ice cream was served. Um, we played bingo for about two hours, which was lots of fun. 
and uh, the prizes were donated by the PTO and then Judy Silva in the front office donated um, some stuffed animals for prizes for the kids which was fantastic. Um, we are in the process of working with the administration on a donation to the library. Uh, the PTO is going to be able to donate about $500 to the library. We're just trying to figure out the best use of the funds and how to use it. So that's in the process of going on right now. Um, and we are getting ready for our spring book fair. And the spring book fair will be taking place in two weeks. And I just found out today that our ambitious chairs have decided to bring in the grilled cheese truck on family night so that families will have uh, <laughs> dinner <laughs> if they want to. Don't park um, in the fire lane. Thank <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll add that to the list. Um, so that should be a fun event and bring in some more families on that evening. Um, we look forward to some more special activities happening over the next month uh, that we'll be updating in our weekly newsletters and I'll let you know about when I come back next month. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Bri, I can't thank you and the uh, PTO enough for what you're doing. And what you can see is uh, very strong strands of trying to promote creativity and innovation with our children in lots of ways. It was mentioned today that uh, some of our classes went to the Whitney Museum. You had David Schwartz. I went and heard him challenging the children as far as mathematical concepts and so on. They were excited about that. So that's, that's, an, that's an important part of who we are as a school and we'll always maintain that. But thank you for, for your support for that. Okay, you're up, Dr. Stella. I'm up already. You're I up. I'm tired of hearing me. I tell you. Um, global education is very important. Global awareness is very, very important. And we seek to do that in a number of ways. One is our world language program that has a proficiency model. It's important for our children looking at K-12 to to leave high school at least proficient in another language, if not more than that. And um, I'm very happy to say that one of our one of our staff members, one of our teachers, recently, just <coughs> as Friday, received a Fulbright grant to study in Morocco, North Africa. And this is in relationship with the University of New Haven. We have an internship model with that school. And, and this teacher will be our ambassador uh, with this Fulbright grant. And uh, the focus is on global classrooms and global awareness, so we look for, forward to some interesting projects that will tie into what we're doing at the school. Also, I was very happy to get a call last week. Uh, I think it's an honor for Beecher Road School. Uh, we were invited by the Connecticut uh, Association of Schools and the State Department to, uh, to host a delegation of principals from China. There will be 17 principals coming, and I believe one of them will be from our sister school in Hussa. Uh, so we're looking forward to that visit. Mr. Lech will, uh, and the Marching Eagles, Owls, not Eagles, Owls, <laughs> over the tug over there, I don't know, Owls, <laughs> will greet them at the door, and um, you know, there'll be uh, some song and, and entertainment, and march them right through the hallways. Our children, Mrs. Prisco and Mrs. White, will be working with our classes. They'll have a chance to stand by the doors and kind of wave to them and, and greet them. They'll go into our rotunda for the usual presentations and so on, and they'll be entertained by our Jan jazz ensemble and then they're going to go off we have parent translators very fortunate in this community to have a number of people from other countries uh, parent translators will help them to break into small groups and to see to see what's unique about Beach Road School so we're looking forward to that one of my favorite events took place this past week and that was the kindergarten orientation favorite ev events because it's the beginning of, uh, of interaction with a new cohort of students that bring new life into the school, and it's just a wonder to watch them go from year to year. Uh, at sixth grade graduation, we see so many of the young men and ladies and have memories of when they were in kindergarten, and what a different picture it was. So it was very nice to talk with the parents afterwards. I had, a, uh, there were a number of new families. I had a chance to interview uh, families, which I like to do, and there were some from other districts, some from other states, and I always ask them the question, the key question, why did you move for, for to Woodbridge, and the the commonality is they all mention the school system. So it's a tribute to our teachers and to our parents' association and school board and, and administration, and, and it's an encouragement that we have, um, you know, we have to keep raising the bar and, and main, not only maintaining but enhancing the quality of education at, at our school. Read Across America took place on March 7th. Uh, we couldn't do it on Dr. Seuss's day. There were too many programs 
programs going on on that day, but we were very pleased as one of the many activities to have over 20 of our town leaders, community leaders, members of the Board of Selectmen Education, Finance, uh, come in and interact with the children and they served as guest readers. They came back to our library media really energized and our children were so happy to see them and welcome me too. So it's another one of the many events. When I say any good school should have a whole series of celebrations and, and rituals, that's the magic of a school and that they uh, exemplified the magic of uh, Beach Road School. So we thank everyone involved with that. Now, as far as uh, part of my superintendent's update, I just wanted to mention, as I mentioned before, at the end of 2013, we were unexpectedly notified by the district's website hosting service, that's Power IT, that as, that as of June 30, 2014, the company will no longer be hosting websites. So we started to scramble, as districts throughout the state did, because it's a, it's a big effort to go from one web server to another, uh, service company to another. And I charged our library tech team, and that's a team, as I always say, that's a team like no other. I have a lot of trust and confidence in them. We charged them with going out to the, to the byways and just find vendors of high quality uh, who can promote the mission that we have of communicating, the critical mission of communicating with parents, the community, and the world. And um, they worked with the administration, administrative team and myself in, uh, in looking forward and we're, we're, we're happy to make a record to sh share with you the, uh, the final site that we, uh, that we picked called Final Site. And Rick Wood, the head of our team, the coordinator, will take over from here. We're going to stand up by the So as Dr. Stella said, we were um, a little bit broadsided in December when um, the announcement came that Power IT was shutting down uh, their operations for schools. Because not only do they host the website, but they provide the service that allows us to manage the content. Uh, they, it was called School CMS. And so we, we found ourselves having to go out and, and do some looking. And uh, James is gonna talk you through this because um, on our team, he took the lead for, uh, for doing the search. Yeah. So as Dr. Sala mentioned, um, when I got the email from Power IT, I was scrambling down to his office because as we know, December and January is when we all rely on the website for snow uh, emergencies and closings and delayed openings. So we know how important the website is. Um, so we met with Dr. Stella and then we, uh, he charged us with finding a new vendor. We then went to the different administrators. We met with uh, Ms. Prisco, Ms. Haverkamp, Mrs. White, um, Mr. Pulo, and tried to find out what the real important things we need to have on our website. What are we things we're looking for? Uh, and what are things that our current vendor, Power IT, has limited us uh, from doing? And from those conversations, we went out and met with, um, or discussed with a few vendors uh, what capabilities are out there, what services that can be provided. Um, Power IT was recommending one company. Um, we had long discussions with them. We looked at um, a few other companies. We put out an E-rate bid uh, request. Uh, so we have a few more companies that uh, email us proposals. Um, and through those proposals, we've looked through the different options that they provided. Um, and from that, we met with, um, or we discussed with some other districts and see what they use. Um, we found out that yeah, Bethany and Orange use Final Sight. Um, Amity High School is currently using Power IT as well, so they're currently searching for a new um, website vendor there. We um, looked at some of the E-rate um, bid proposals. Yeah. We talked with some people. Rick used his vast network of um, tech friends across the state and kind of did some, you know, searching around to see who liked what site. Um, some of the people looked really great on paper, but when we found out some colleagues who use them, they said, don't even touch them. So we, we really used the last probably six weeks um, from January to February, trying to bet out some people. And at the end, two um, people came to the top. And in the last kind of crucial weeks when we were going back and forth, quick questions, um, the final site kind of came to the top. They were very quick um, responses to all our questions. Um, whatever changes and modifications we needed um, for proposals, they were really very responsive to that. Um, and from there, we uh, met with Dr. Stella again and kind of made out another proposal. And we chose final side. Final side. <laughs> <laughs> the final side. Like the Oscars. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You, you didn't put it out long enough. There was no music. <laughs> there was no music oh. in it. 
Um, right. So the kind of the thing is, who is Final Sight? Final Sight is actually a company based in East Hartford. Um, they serve over uh, 400 uh, different schools, independent school districts, uh, with over 1,000 plus schools in 45 countries, 45 different states uh, in the US. Um, they have 60 plus employees. Um, they're a nice, connected local company. They've been in business since the late 1990s. And um, we're going to talk just a little bit about their platform. Um, they give us some guarantees. Um, uptime is a big one. Uh, we had experience with Power IT um, in the not too recent past uh, where we were without service for several days and we were uh, again surprised when um, they hadn't notified us within the first 24 hours of, of the issues. And, and so we, um, it took us a few days to get back online. So we're looking for something that's not going to happen like that again. Um, James? So um, one of the things, they use it, what's called a tier one data center. Um, and what that means is a lot of big time companies use tier one data centers. So they give the example of when Hurricane Sandy and Hurricane Irene came through the region, none of their websites went down for one second. They have backup generators, power. So in the critical times when we need a website up, they have their website and they're guaranteed up. Um, they say it's, uh, one of them is based in Western Mass and they have four other locations throughout the country. Um, so it's kind of the guaranteed uptime. They have up-to-date servers and machines so that they can handle high loads of visitors coming to the website if there is a demand, such as a you know, delayed opening when parents and everyone are checking the website constantly. They can handle that load. Um, and again, the high performance stuff means faster browsing, faster clicking through the website and going through. They also have nightly backups of all their machines, so if something happens in one of the centers, they have a backup and they can restore to that quickly. And their content management system um, sets them apart from the others. Uh, this was what really sold us um, on, on final site above the contenders. Um, they provide a fully customized design for the site. Um, everyone else, you have a choice of a few templates um, and you fit within their formats. What they're going to do is they're going to come here to Beecher, they're going to get to know us, they're going to help us design who we are online. So we'll have a have a totally new look that will fit our needs and, and our school. Um, they have a, a design in their system, which I'm going to talk about in a, min in a minute, that, that allows for editing for any skill level. So we can have um, someone who knows nothing about websites editing a page if necessary, uh, down, right down to people who know HTML and the works. Um, it also optimizes uh, for search engine compatibility. And the, what this does is, if you've noticed on Google recently, a lot of the pages come up and then there are sub subtitles under the pages um, so that you can target specific aspects. We're going to be able to program what those are when they come up um, from the back end of this site. We'll be able to target you know, that, that extended day or, or some program comes up as we, as we wish. Uh, which is a which is a feature that we didn't see in, in others. Their content management system um, allows for, and it's the only one that we saw like this, allows for editing the page as you see the page. Every other system that we um, checked out, you have a back-end editor where you go in and you edit line by line, and then you save it, then you preview it, it doesn't look right, you go back, you work on it, you save it, you preview it, and go back. This, you do it live right here on the page, um, which means that um, that's going to save hours <laughs> uh, of time uh, for, for James and for everybody else working on the site. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier for teachers to go because you can just click on the section that you want to edit, click kind of an edit pencil, and it'll bring up the little tools, that little toolbar there that I highlighted, and you can just modify the text right there then and there instead of, as Rick said, go back and forth between pages and kind of losing your place. Um, the other thing that um, I don't know if you mentioned later, but it also provides the ability for password protected pages, um, which our old site didn't. So we, allow, we can allow for certain sections to be um, given a, a public kind of password and kind of section that off. We're we'll able to provide things to parents that we haven't been able to provide in the past because we've only had a public side. So. Um, another part of the custom <coughs> design is that we're able to go in and do, they're going to do custom design with us, but um, and designs the basic layout, but we're going to be able to go in and edit 
the, the styles of the pages and the layouts of the pages before and with most with all the other companies we're, we're stuck with a template and we fit into the template here we can design our own templates uh, which is uh, which will be a major um, help and as James said we'll be able to design pages that are password protected as well one of the really nice things about uh, final site it, it provides what's called a responsive design site so the site looks at what device you're calling from the site. So whether you're calling from a laptop, a desktop screen, smartboard screen, a tablet, or a phone, it changes and rescales the website to optimize for that screen size. So instead of pinching and zooming on your phone to try to find what tab you need to click on, it will resize the website, website move you know tables and um, links around to kind of optimize. It also provides for us for a mobile site, which will look kind of completely different than our um, district or the um, the desktop site. And so you can then see an example here where the same links are provided, but some of the graphics may be pulled out to make it easier to browse from your Android or iPhone um, device. So it allows for if you're checking on the go, you can check the website a lot easier. Through that. Also has the potential for us to have at additional cost in the future, um, a mobile app um, for feature design. And that would be allowed for sending notifications, push notifications, so you get a little ding on your phone and all that. The calendar manager um, allows for different calendars to be um, pulled from different locations um, and put into one spot. So we can have district calendar, PTO calendar, events calendar, um, all show up on one thing, color coded. People can subscribe to these calendars. You can print these calendars. Um, there's print options. Um, so you can interact with it a couple, couple of different ways. You can also customize the view. So if you only want to see a certain type of calendars, you can just click on those calendars and just see, see those. There's a forms manager, which will allow us to do things like take surveys, collect data, um, without using things like SurveyMonkey, the, the, the other services that we've um, paid for in the past. Um, and it will collate the data and, and serve it up in a variety of formats uh, for our use. Um, flexible forms, um, there are mobile forms so that we can design forms for um, phones as well as, as for um, computer with desktop. And um, notifications, so when someone completes a form, um, we can actually have it send an email notification to some a recipient in the school. So if there's a form for, a, say, a registration form or something like that, it needs to go to the <coughs> office once it's completed. Once someone fills in the form, that completed response will then can get emailed directly to the person who needs to get that information. And this one, Dr. Stella is, is really excited about. Um, we'll be able to send um, email newsletters that have a real look to them as opposed to the text types of um, communications that we've been using through First Alert. Um, and one of the most exciting pieces is that each of these sections of the template that we design can be tied specifically to a section on the website. So the information will fill automatically as the website is filled and a newsletter can be populated and ready to roll with all of the latest news that's up on the website. And each one of these email uh, has a template behind it. So depending on which administrator the email comes from, the template design could be different from each person um, where it goes from. And again, it gives analytic, analytic uh, information from when the emails go out. Do people receive them? Um, how long do they look? Do they click through and go through that? So it provides that whole back end piece too. And it builds an automatic archive of all of those messages so that you can go back and, and see what, what was sent out last month or something. Um, as Rick alluded to in the beginning, um, when we had some troubles with Power IT recently, uh, the support has kind of been waning um, since they made their announcement. Um, Final Sight uh, support, what they put out as goals, is I think tremendous. Uh, critical tickets are resolved within 15 minutes, high priority tickets within four hours, normal tickets um, within eight hours. And on the right hand side, you can see their actual time is 11 minutes for fixing a critical problem. High priority tickets are just under two hours, and normal tickets are processed within just under five hours. So it's a great response time. They also provide um, e-documents on their website for teachers to go on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, there are webinars, there are training videos, uh, everything that's provided for them um, 
there as well. And as part of the deployment package, um, we've recommended to Dr. Stella that we um, have the company come here for three days, um, which will jumpstart us and, and get us rolling so that we'll be in, done in time for um, the shift prior to um, July 1. And during that time, they will, they will actually get to know us, get to know the building, get to know the people, get to know the needs of the district, and they will have graphic designers and things on site working with us so that we can make um, immediate decisions about layout and design. Yeah, they're planning to be here for, for about just under 30 hours in the course of three days. Um, so it's going to be long days, but they're going to be meeting with the different constituents. So hopefully by the time they leave, they'll have a good understanding. We'll have a rough outline. So hopefully by July 1, we have a rough outline of where we need to be. We may not have the complete site built out, but we will definitely have our front pages and a few um, critical things up there. And as the summer progresses, we will uh, be continuing to build more behind the scenes. So this is really a major step um, above and beyond what we've had um, for the past um, two or three website designs. And, and I think that it's, it's a time now where with the mobile um, technologies available and everything that we can really capitalize on, on um, that as communication. Thanks, Carl. How long is the contract that we have to sign to get on board? And what happens to cost? Okay, so um, the, the long-term picture, if we, um, if we continue the contract for five years, and I'm, I'm not sure exactly if the language, Al, for um, whether we have to sign definitely for five years, but if we go for five years, then we get their design services, their, which equate to about $20,000. 25. 25,000, right, um, at no cost. Um, if we bow out prior to five years, um, we pay a prorated um, portion. Because one of the things that we inadvertently learned is that this whole world was changing very rapidly. And it sounds like a, a fortuitous good deal that yeah. these other folks faded, but it seems to me going forward we need to be on top of this thing and set up some formal process by which you are sure that we're at the state of the art. Yes. Deal with, with whatever costs might be involved if we have to have an early termination. And the, um, I think that one of the beauties of Final Sight is they really are one of the leaders um, at all the conferences that I go to and, and, and look at um, different t types and designs in the school realm. Final Sight always bubbles up to the top. As, yes. as you go through the, the deployment process and the design, are you going to be looking for parents' input to get there? I mean, they kind of go to the website for different purposes than they've been trying to do Yes, I think that's that will be a part of it. We haven't actually had time to sit down and do that piece of, of the, the planning yet because this this came rather quickly. Carrie's an excellent idea. Yes. yes. I know they give us a rough outline and schedule of kind of what they want to see, and I know there are blocks for those different constituents to be invited in. Yeah, I mean, the PTO might even be able to help yeah. coordinate that. That's yes, happen. that'd be great. Well, now, now you see why I call this team a team like no other. <laughs> uh, what, seemed, what seemed like a disaster turned into a wonderful opportunity, and it's really going to promote us and push us along this pathway towards more personal learning 24-7, connection with uh, connecting our, our whole Beecher Road School community. Um, and I have to thank the school board too because when we came with our need, what the problem was, what our need was, you immediately came to the support of it. So we thank you very, very much for that. So thank you, men. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Two of our administrators with us, Mrs. Prisco, our principal, and Nancy White. Sometimes it seems as if they, they've been working as an administrative <coughs> team for a year and a half. Sometimes it seems like they've been here for 10 or 20 years. And uh, we take, sometimes we take things for granted. Uh, this team of administrators, these two, the, the dynamic duo, has helped us transition from a two school system into a one school pre K to six. And it was hand in glove. 
it looks easy, but there was a lot of hard work. They're both very, very energetic, hands-on. They complement each other, very child-centered. So I'll ask each of them if they have anything to report about Beecher Road School. So um, once again, I stand before you for the VRS update, but I think I've been upstaged by our news reporters this evening <laughs> and our PTO. Um, as always, school that does not sleep. I too had an opportunity to be down with the fourth grade uh, presentation today, and the students were so engaged. And it's just another example of what we do outside of the classroom. And we, we continue to try to find ways in which students can tap different areas of learning, different ways to express their learning, and to display what they know. So we'll continue to do that. Um, we will continue to have these events, but we have to thank the PTO for supporting those, um, certainly, as well as the um, outside of the building trips. <coughs> Today, as you heard, um, Peabody Museum, again, another group will be going this week. But we also um, have to credit Officer Lynch. This Friday, DARE, we will have a demonstration for our sixth graders in the afternoon. So there are many, many things that go on aside from our typical day. And believe me, that typical day is far from typical for our students in and out of the classrooms. And I have the opportunity, although we are working on a new one, but I'm in the middle of reading uh, the report cards. There's a stack in my office. It's not just a report card. There's what teachers write about the students. There's the self-reflections. There's the performance task from art or music. So again, I, I say, as I stand before you, um, like no other, we will continue reading, writing, arithmetic, and everything else that Beecher does. So thanks. Thank you. Well, Mrs. Trisco, Beecher Road School. It's a school that never sleeps. Sometimes I think you two don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you work so hard. Um, I'm sorry I gave you some information about the science uh, CMT, but I forgot that we had our snow days. So, Mrs. White, when is the science? Wednesday. 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 This Wednesday, Wednesday, the 19th. Okay, so it's, it's, it's this week. It was changed because of the snow days. And SBAC is coming, the window? Uh, April 28th through May 16th. Okay. And we're going to treat our children with tender love and care as, we, as they take the test. Okay, that's our report. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, facilities, Karen? Hey, Matt. <clears throat> On Thursday, March 6th, uh, we received an update regarding the coordination implementation of the building upgrade. Um, we discussed anticipated um, paving projects which will be planned for uh, when the upgrade is complete or um, at least not take work taking place outside, um, and that's thanks to the steep grant which we anticipate getting in the spring of 2015. We received an update from Mr. Pulo regarding tools for schools. Um, the <coughs> primary wing is complete. The process is going very well and will continue throughout the rest of the school. And we received a sustainability update from Mrs. Prisco. Uh, the stewards are actually, the sixth graders are actually teaching other kids in the cafeteria about recycling and learning about single stream recycling and the um, coordination with Masara Farm and MAG is moving forward. Can I have any questions for Karen? Okay. Um, BRS Building Committee is meeting again, um, often. There's a meeting this Wednesday, um, a subcommittee that's um, <coughs> focusing on security, and then there's another me meeting schedule. The plan at this point is to meet every two weeks as a building committee, which is really, um, you know, just, just kind of a high level function compared to the meetings that will go on, you know, daily between the, um, you know, person coordinating the project and Dr. Stella and Al and Greg and, and everybody else. So I don't know if you want to add something. Yeah, what I'll add to that too, thank you, thank you, Jonathan. <coughs> We're looking, at, we got what we asked for, the upgrade is coming. And it's important that we keep our summer programs, they're very important for our community. So we are aggressively looking for other facilities to use during the summer because we'll have to hand over our building to the construction crews. The new superintendent from Amity has been more than welcoming. We're taking a good look as, at possibly using uh, Amity High School for some of our programs. And we may be able to use Ezra Academy for one, of, one or two of our smaller programs too. But we'll keep you informed. Uh, again, he's very, very supportive. 
it's just a question if we can fit in the right size and if we do we'll develop uh, it'll be an adventure for us we'll make that an adventure um, and uh, we're looking to get a self-contained area for the high school so we could have our own security system and watch out for our children and uh, you know, pick up and try to drop off and pick up and things of that sort but we'll have more information for you in the near future and is the building um, renovation going to just is it going to start in the summer or before the school year ends? It's uh, the the re renovation is we anticipate it will start as soon as the contract is signed, which should be imminently. And what will happen is we want we don't want to interfere with education at all during the school year. So the uh, the contractors are, are very willing to work with us, and uh, what they'll be doing is the type of work that that could be done starting at six o'clock working on three shifts right up to the early morning before school starts and if they do any work in the classroom what they're guaranteeing is that that <coughs> class will be cleaned up and ready to go the next morning they'll work on things that are not knocking down walls or taking off ceilings or anything like that during the year they'll be working on things such as lighting and adjustments and things of that sort the kind of head start that they could get between now and June then they're anxious to get a hold of the building because then they'll send in crews of workers to work round the clock during the summer, replacing roofs, knocking down walls, putting in windows, doors, the whole, the whole gamut of things. Uh, Al, do you want to add, any, add anything to that? You, you captured it pretty much. Well. Okay. Um, policy. Matt. Policy uh, committee. Thanks, Carl. Policy committee has had some. Uh, tough times and, and started for our <laughs> final uh, goal to finish up the last series uh, for various uh, illnesses, snow days. We have not had a meeting in several months. Uh, and so uh, we have not met nothing new to report, but I do need a motion to uh, from somebody to approve the uh, 5,000 series, which was up for approval today. So if someone can make that motion to at least take some action today. Motion to approve the 5,000 series. Second. Okay. Favor. All those in favor? Okay. Compliments to the policy committee by the just by the weight of uh, this package here. Yeah. So <laughs> the work that has been done. <laughs> we have one more to go and we can't get there. <laughs> we'll get there. <coughs> we'll get there. We'll be done. Did you have something, Carl? No. Nope. Oh, okay. I'm next, I guess. Oh, okay. Yes. All right, that's right. Finance. Uh, the finance committee met uh, a week ago. Steve Fleischman came in roughly midway through the meeting. Uh, got a sense of how slowly things were going and turned down the opportunity to take over the chair. <laughs> um, the reason being that we had had a, a very thorough discussion of, of the motion and there was a sense of the meeting that the following motion should be approved by this board. I move that we approve the 2013-14 budget surplus recommendations as presented by the administration. Second. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Okay, thank you. Alrighty, hey, liaison report. Lisa is not here. Um, ACES, we're, we're not attending the ACES meeting right now, and they're aware that we're not going to be able to attend their meetings this year. Um, new business, Dr. Stella, we're back to you again. Oh my goodness, aren't you all tired right. of me? <laughs> we get back to you pretty quick here. Okay, so this is. Yeah. The staff, the staff retirements and the yes, the yes, I'm looking forward to speaking about it. Well, Lynn Piazic <coughs> is, um, <laughs> I take out my handkerchief, retiring this year. Uh, but uh, Lynn is such a special person. Uh, she's been with the school since she first came to the school as a student. She has such an ownership and such a dedication to the school and is exhibited in so many ways. The children love her, the parents love her, the community does. She's given so generously of her time, her efforts. She cares so much about the children and the school and the town. So, Len, we appreciate your years of service. And I have in front of me that image in that video when we were promoting the upgrade. I think Lynn, <coughs> Lynn Stapen did it, said it all. She said, I sat, there was a picture of her in a classroom. She said, I sat in these seats when I was a child. <laughs> and that was 35, 
No, more no, than, more than <laughs> 30 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> it looks that way. The exact it, it, it number doesn't need to be ago. said. Yeah, but, yeah. but it's the same windows that we had then. It was so mm, years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we thank you for all you've done. And this is your school. And we look forward to having you come back often. Thank you, guys. Um, I figured the windows are going to be replaced. It's probably time for me to be replaced. <laughs> um, it's been a, it's been a, a, a long, a long journey, um, and I tried to synthesize in my letter um, the importance that this school um, has had for me personally, both as a student and a community member and a and a teacher here. Um, it's, it's really been such a huge part of my life. Uh, so as a milestone, you know, you think about all of the things that have happened over the 36 years that I've been teaching here and then the years before that that I was a student here. Um, one thing I always said, you know, we had, we had a time when there was such a turnover of administrators. And um, so 36 years, 48 administrators, and um, but I think we have an administrative team now as Guy always says that's like no other and um, I always said if we got to 50 it didn't matter how many years I had I was going <laughs> to retire um, but I think we got a great group now and we have people who really care about what's going on in the school and um, it has been such a pleasure for me to end my career with these administrators um, I have nothing but great things to say about each and every one of them and um, you know, Al has been such a such a help to me in this decision making process. And Guy, um, their support has been unending. Nancy, my friend, my colleague, I'm going to cry because she's just <laughs> such a part of my life. Um, Sheila has been wonderful in supporting the special ed um, initiatives in this school, and and Gina has been a, a welcome delight. So, um, so I leave with a, a good feeling about what's going on in the school, and um, I, I, I hope not to go too far. So um, I thank all of you for um, giving me a, a real opportunity to fulfill my dream here. for you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, and, and I don't know if anybody else wants to say anything. You know, Lynn, obviously you'll be missed. You'll be back, you know, because nobody really leaves Beecher. I'm right. Like <laughs> Certainly I haven't. You know, yeah, I, they do keep coming back, um, which is just, just a, you know, a great thing. It's a good thing. So um, thank you so much for your comments. Thank you for everything. And I don't know if anybody else. Oh. And, and I thank all, you know, the people who serve on the Board of Education. My, my involvement in the town has been, um, in me wearing many different hats and so I have such respect for you people who serve on the Board of Education because for years and years I came to board meetings as the liaison as Teresa does now and um, have, se have also seen the board evolve and it's just really so nice to see um, the well-oiled workings of the board now and um, because there's, there's real history in the Board of Education as well. Um, <laughs> so, so I thank you for your service. And it's a great day for you guys to, to, for me to be able to recognize you for what you do for, for the kids in this school as well and for our community. Because I know what it's like to be on TV and um, <laughs> as a, a zoning board member. So um, I thank you guys too. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you for your kind words. Diane Dolan, where are you, Diane? She had had a leave. Diane had a leave. Yeah, sorry. Well, this will be recorded. I'm sure she, she'll see this here. Diane, again, is a, a professional par excellence. Um, her children, her grandchildren have gone to the school. Um, she has gone above and beyond over the years in serving the children and the community. Her influence goes far beyond her role here as a speech pathologist. She's volunteered and has been involved in so many committees, uh, willing to work morning, noon, and <coughs> night, whenever it was necessary during the summer months. So she'll be missed, but we know where she lives too. And uh, we'll be reaching out, uh, out to her as we will to Lynn. And we thank her for her years of service, of wonderful service. The, 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 
these two people are examples of why so many families are moving to Woodbridge. Is our teachers care so much about our children, and that uh, we thank you for all you've done. So you must thank you. I move that we accept the retirement of Diane Dolan and Lynn Piazza, effective June 30th, 2014, with regret and with great admiration. I second that and emphasize the word with regret. Thank you. All right. Although we can't vote against it, really. <laughs> 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 well, we can try. 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 Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. All right. And Dr. Stella, you have the for Diane. Um, the leave. Did, did we vote on Diane Dolan? Yeah. Both, both of them. Both. Okay. Both Together. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's a leave of absence, and for good reason. It's childcare rearing. That's a good thing. So that's for Stephanie Ellen. Okay, motion to that we grant a child uh, ch child rearing leave to Stephanie Ellick for the 2014-2015 school year. Second, Second that. All right. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. you know, as always, say we love children. Say keep, keep them coming, and they are coming. Stop. From the parents okay. and from staff. So. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to check to see if anybody signed up for public comment here. Oh, nope. All right. So that we adjourn. Okay. Second. All right. <laughs> Yep. Um, so we're going to take a couple minutes, and we are, we're going to come back for a session a couple minutes after. We everybody, thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.